Hello everyone. I welcome you in the virtual classroom of business environment. We are discussing unit number 3 Indian tax system and in that we are discussing types of taxation. Up till now we have completed the proportional tax and now we are moving towards progressive tax. If we talk about proportional tax, then proportional tax is charged on a same percentage on every income. Like this, if you are earning 5 lakh, you need to pay 10% and whether you are paying, whether you are earning 50 lakh, then also you need to pay 10%. So irrespective of the level of income, everyone needs to pay same tax that is known as a proportional tax. We have also seen the advantage and disadvantage of the same and now we are moving towards progressive taxation as the name itself suggests progressive progressive means what increasing the tax rate which is increasing is known as an progressive taxation but here this tax rate has direct connection with the level of income if your level of income is increasing the tax rate is increasing and if your level of income is decreasing your tax rate is decreasing a progressive tax is based on taxpayers' ability to pay. See, what is ability to pay? It is one of the canon of taxation that we will see in the upcoming lectures. But up till now, you just remember ability to pay means affordability to pay. Affordability depends on your income level. If you are rich, you are afford to pay. You can afford to pay more tax and if you are poor, you cannot afford to pay a single penny as well. So it, be, it depends on the ability to pay. Those whose ability is more will pay more and those whose ability is less will pay less. It imposes a lower tax rate on low income earners than on those with higher income. That is what written here that the... They, it charges lower tax on the low income and the higher tax on a higher income. This is usually achieved by creating tax bracket. See, what we need to create is tax bracket. Tax bracket means you need to decide the lower limit and the upper limit and within which you are deciding a particular rate of percentage. See, here I have created a tax bracket of 5 lakh to 10 lakh. Minimum limit is 5 lakh and maximum limit is 10 lakh. If the income is between 5 lakh to 10 lakh, then people need to pay 10% tax. So, in progressive taxation, tax brackets are created. If we talk about Indian tax system, then in India, progressive taxation are in existence. And I haven't given you the figure of our Indian taxation system, but it is just an illus illustrative example that up to 5 lakh there is a nil in india also we are exempting certain level of income from tax payment and if the income is between 5 lakh to 10 lakh 10 percent is need to be paid and if income is between 10 lakh to 20 lakh 20 percent tax is to be paid in india also we are having this kind of system 0 10 percent 20 percent and 30 percent the 30 percent is the highest rate of tax charge on a indian population now let us see the advantages of the same this tax system is based on ability to pay see this we have discussed in the introductory part only that progressive system is based on ability to pay what do you mean by ability to pay means affordability to pay income and ability to pay are important and correlated to each other the level of income and the rate of taxation go together positively means they have a positive relation if one increases then second increases if one decreases then second decreases means if income increases tax rate also increases and if income decreases tax rate also decreases when the income increases tax also increases and when the income decreases the tax also decreases respectively Due to such system, the taxpayer do not oppose the system. See, because of their affordability, the taxpayer will not oppose the system. 
in proportional taxation what happens that whether you are rich or poor you need to pay tax so there is a chances of opposition from the population that poor will oppose they cannot afford then how they can pay but in case of progressive taxation system what happens there is no chance of opposition as we are exempting poor from the tax payment they will not oppose us and we are charging less tax from those who can afford less and we are charging more from those who can afford more so rich don't have a ground to oppose and the middle class will not oppose because they are already paying less as compared to rich class so this method is based on ability to pay and because of ability to pay the population will not oppose this system then secondly it is written here the second advantage is morally just morally just means this system is justified on the ground that this system is ethical this system is for the goodness of both of the party which both party one is a taxpayer and second is a tax collector taxpayer is the citizen and tax collector is government morally just on the ground that it is beneficial for the both from the viewpoint of government this system is beneficial because they can collect the resources collect the money as per their requirement and it is beneficial to the population because they are not paying too much to the government that it feels pinching to the population so it is morally just according to the law diminishing marginal utility economics the marginal utility of sacrifice is considered when calculating the tax liability of various person according to the concept of public finance broadcast shoulders should be uh, the heaviest burden see according to the law of diminishing utility what says that the broadcast shoulders should be uh, the heaviest burden broadcast shoulders means what the shoulder which can bear the heaviest weight and here we are talking about tax so we need to take uh, we need to talk in context of income so those who are earning more those who are rich they can afford they can be your heaviest burden so rich people are need to pay the highest tax and the poor people are need to pay the lowest tax so this system is morally just because it does not gives any kind of disadvantage to any of the party government can collect though they are giving exemption to poor people and people are paying according to their ability to pay so the system is morally just then the third advantage is it promotes equality in income distribution see this is the disadvantage of proportional tax and the same is advantage for progressive taxation as i told you in proportional taxation that any countries population is in a triangle format each country is having three class rich class middle class and poor class according to progressive tax it promotes equality in income distribution see according to progressive taxation poor people are exempted from tax so there is no tax from poor people only two class need to pay rich class and middle class so rich class will pay higher tax because of high tax burden their income reduces because of income reduction they may fall from rich class to middle class middle class are already there in a middle class because they are paying least as compared to rich class if we talk about poor class then they are paying nothing so they can increase their income and get, they can switch over to middle class so what happened rich is shifting to the middle class and poor is shifting to the middle class middle class is already in middle class so the society will become classless society there will be no rich and there will be no poor though this is a theory that government needs to do this but this cannot easily happen because of a huge gap in a income of rich class and poor class but the motive is to promote equality in income distribution 
to engage population of the economy to earn almost same level of income then the next advantage is this system is more flexible what do you mean by flexible flexible simply means the there is a room for change whenever the circumstances changes whenever the environment changes whenever the requirement changes at that time you can do change in a tax system then that tax system can be known as a flexible tax system if we talk about progressive tax system then it is more flexible why because as per the requirement of government government can change the tax rates if you talk about india then you must be knowing that the tax bracket is also changing though the percentage of tax rate is also changing when government requirement for money is more that increases the tax rate and when government's requirement for money is less that reduces the tax rate but the change in the tax rate is permissible after one year you know that in india the tax rates are declared in the budget in march and it is applicable from april so that one for one financial year the tax rate is in existence and after a year government can change the tax rate in the middle of the year government cannot change so if we talk about flexibility yes there is a flexibility but it is not that much that at any point of time government can change their tax rate so the system is flexible because it can be changeable according to the requirement of government when the requirement is more tax rates will be higher when requirements will be less tax rates will be lessened then the system is less expensive you must be thinking about that uh, what is the context of expense in tax tax is the area from where government is earning only so where is the idea of cost coming in the picture see in collection of tax also government is expensing government is incurring cost for collection of tax government needs to create income tax department tax department not only income tax but tax department they need to create we are having gst also so for collection of gst for collection of income tax they need to hire the staff for the same they need to develop a system computer system is there then uh, legal procedure they need to decide different kinds of forms are need to issued and so in creating this whole system government is incurring cost but if we talk about progressive system then the least cost is incurred as compared to other system like in proportional system all people need to pay the tax so the tax collector number of tax collector will be more so salary will be more so uh, system will be expensive but if we talk about progressive tax system two or people are exempted so one part of population will be out of tax payment so number of tax payer will be less and because of that reason the tax collector will be less less staff is need to be higher and less salary need to be paid so from that point of view we can say that the system is less expensive that is all about the advantage of progressive tax system now let us discuss the disadvantage of this system the first disadvantage is the arbitrary fixation of rates arbitrary means what lump sum without any specific calculation without any uh, what we can say without any pro rata without any pro base the government decides the tax rate which is arbitrary which is lump sum the person from the government who decides the tax rate generally are not in a position to see what the actual system is there in a market they just decide 10% for the people earning 5 lakh to 10% but whether 10% is affordable in the present inflation rate yes or no so that is a matter of affection that is a matter to feel so the people who generally sit in the parliament in a ministry 
generally the final uh, taxation rate is decided by the finance minister a part of ministry he def he must not be having any kind of idea that how people are living in middle class and poor class how the people who are non government employees how they are living their lives so they are just fixing the rate just looking at the requirement of government if the government's requirement is so, so much like and lakhs and crores of rupees they will just decide the rate they will not look at the second side of the coin means they will not look at the tax payers point of view they will only look at from the tax collectors point of view so that is why we can say that the system is arbitrary fixation of rate means the tax rate are decided on a lump sum basis what do you mean by lump sum means no any calculative and no any reality logical base tax rates are decided the rate of tax are fixed arbitrarily especially at higher levels of income they are fixed as they feel proper which does not satisfy government's requirement for tax revenue at time of crisis sometimes what happen that just because elections are coming in the economy then what uh, the ruling party do they just lessens the tax rate just to create positivity in a population that they are quite uh, people concern ruling party and when the election will be come the next budget will come there will be change in the there will be higher tax rate will be there so this tax rates are moving up and down not uh, because of the requirement of government not from the viewpoint of tax payer but from their own set selfish motive of a ruling party to come again in a ruling position to be again government so the arbitrary fixation of rate so many uh, logics come in a way at the time of deciding the tax rates if we talk about second disadvantage then the savings discourage due to progressive system the savings discourage see how this is possible there is no tax on the poor class and there is minor tax on a middle class and a higher tax on a rich class if we talk about middle class they are the people who are earning less as according to their expectation from their income their expectations are not fulfilled and then also they need to pay a part to the government so there is no chances of saving if we talk about rich class they are earning a lot they are living a life as per their expectation and they are paying to the government after making payment to the government the part remains on their hand which is known as a saving if they saves then they will invest it somewhere else say for example a person has saved 5 lakh of rupees a year and he is investing in suppose fd now from fd when the fd will be uh in a position to open when you will earn the interest on your fd again government will charge tax on the same though this is your saving and saving is from the income in which you have already paid the tax so this will be seen as a double taxation to the people that if i will save what why people saves to enjoy it in a future and when the time comes for the enjoyment government will again come for taking their own part so uh, when the real enjoyment comes for enjoying your income that enjoyment will be replaced by the stress on the payment of the taxes so because of this reason is it re- discourages the savings people will not save they will spend on a present period of time because they feel that if i will save for future again government come in the future and they will ask for the tax and saving is from the income of of your present income on which you have already paid the tax so ideally there should be not tax payment on the savings but government is charging tax on the savings as well so it discourages the savings in a economy then the third disadvantage is it promotes the tax evasion what do you mean by tax evasion when people try not to pay the tax then it is known as a tax evasion in simple words we can say it as a tax avoidance when people don't want to pay the tax they will file the false return 
show their income as a less and they will uh, save they will escape from the payment of tax liabilities that is known as a tax evasion see what happens in a progressive tax system that we have created three class one for exempted one for the less income and second for a rich class what rich class will do they will show their income if we see the figure right here that suppose uh, we are charging 20 percent from 10 lakh to 20 lakh now what people will try to do they will show a false return they will file false return showing that they are earning less than 10 lakh at least that much adjustment can be done in the return that much adjustment can be done in the books of account uh, you know that in india that most of the businessmen are keeping two sets of books of account one is the real and one is the fake one to be shown to the income tax department where so many kinds of adjustments are done so what kind of adjustments they are doing that they are motive of this adjustment is to show the less income the 10 lakh people the people who are falling in the bracket of 10 lakh to 20 lakh will show their income less than 10 lakh so they will fall in the second bracket 5 lakh to 10 lakh who needs to pay 10 percent so they are doing tax evasion what middle class will do they are falling in the bracket of 5 lakh to 10 lakh they will file a return that their income is less than 5 lakh so they will pay zero tax so almost all rich will try to fall in the middle class middle class will try to fall in the poor class poor class is already exempted so they will not go anywhere but any everyone is trying to evade the tax because there is a chance to evade the tax in case of proportional taxation there is no chance of tax evasion because everyone has to pay flat tax rate whether you are earning one rupee or you are earning one crore of rupee so there is no chance of uh, showing less income and to pay the less taxes but in case of progressive income as the tax rate varies people got chances to evade the tax then the fourth disadvantage is it discourages the production activity due to progressive tax system the production activity means it will discourage the businessman in the economy how come that when businessman tries to earn more government charges more tax and when government charges more tax they uh, very less income remains in the hands of a businessman to enjoy as a profit so business cannot be done just to earn profit from profit you need to pay so many cost and after paying so many costs you need to pay your tax and after payment of tax if you see the real income the real amount of profit it will be in a single digit if we talk in context of percentage it will be in a single digit the enjoyable amount of profit is always in a single digit now you just remember that if you work hard when you earn more when you can earn more when you work hard so just to increase your income just to increase your profit how much efforts you are putting in and after putting so much effort when the income comes in your hand to enjoy is does it match with your efforts so sometimes it feels like you are putting the efforts 100 and you are getting the return as 10 only and is there any match between 100 and 10 if you are putting the efforts of 100 and you are getting the return of 10 only why to put any effort just be uh, enjoying your present situation so that happens with the businessman that if we will increase our production government will increase the tax then why to increase production just not to increase production we are happy with our present situation so it will discourage the production activities secondly the production also not increases because the people cannot get fund to invest we have already discussed that savings discourage due to savings discourage there is small amount of loanable fund with the banks as there is no savings there will be no the people will not put any kind of deposit in a bank and bank cannot have any loanable fund as bank cannot have any loanable fund the interest rate will be higher for the loan so again your cost is increasing on one hand tax is also increasing so this both situation 
that higher tax rate for the loan and a higher interest rate for the loan and higher tax rate will result into lesser profit that is the reason that entrepreneurs don't go for increasing production rather we can say that it discourage it reduces the production activity in a economy so this is all about the disadvantage of progressive tax system now let us discuss the last types of taxation that is regressive taxation if you see in your textbook then uh, you are given four types of taxation regressive and degressive as well but there is no kind of degressive taxation as per the reference book there is only three types of taxation and we need to learn only three types that is proportional progressive and regressive now let us focus on the regressive taxation regressive is exactly opposite of progressive let us see the definition the meaning of the regressive taxation regressive tax is a tax applied uniformly taking a large percentage of income from low income earners than from high income earners simply means poor are charged higher tax and rich are charged less tax it is in opposition to the progressive tax which takes a larger percentage from high income earners in progressive what happens we are charging high from the rich and less from the poor but in regressive we are charging high from the poor and less from the rich you may feel that this is a logicless thinking this should not happen and uh, this should not be allowed at all but as this is a type of taxation we need to accept it uh, if we see the example then from 0 to 5 lakh 30 percent tax is charged from 5 lakh to 10 lakh 20 percent tax is charged and from 10 lakh to 20 lakh 10 percent tax is charged this is exact opposite to the progressive where in progressive it will be 10 20 30 in regressive it is 30 20 10 now according to your question that uh, it is logicless to charge from poor because poor cannot afford to have two times bread and butter we should not at all charge any tax from the poor but the arguments given in favor of regression taxation is uh, in any economy the number of poor people are more as compared to rich yes or no rich people are always less and poor are always more so if you want to increase the income of government you should focus on a poor people here income is not given importance but the number of people is given importance so just because to increase the income of government they are focusing on poor people to pay more taxes this is the argument given in favor of regressive taxation though this is not valid uh, just because to increase the income of government we should not make target of poor people it is totally logicless because they cannot afford to pay a single penny of tax but if we look at from the other point of view this system it provides negative motivation negative motivation to poor people to earn more if we compare these three system of taxation proportional progressive and regressive then this is the system which only provides motivation to earn more in proportional there is no motivation and in progressive we have just discussed this that is a demotivation to earn more but it is only regressive which gives you motivation to earn more but i have told you that it gives you negative motivation as you know that there are two types of motivation positive and negative what do you mean by positive motivation suppose there is a salesman who is told that if you finish your target you will be given bonus this is a positive motivation if you finish your target you will be given positive uh, you will be given bonus another thing if you don't complete your target you will be fired in both of the situation either you are giving bonus or you are firing your employee you are just compelling your employee to finish the target your motive is just to finish anyhow so is it good to give stress to the employee when you are giving stress it results into negative motivation and when you are giving bonus it will result into positive motivation 
hope now you are clear with the negative motivation now coming back to our topic that regressive taxation provides negative motivation to the poor people how come it says to the poor people that you if you remain poor you need to pay 30 percent but if you work hard and if you earn more you need to pay lesser tax so that is a kind of negative motivation we are providing to the poor people but just to pay lesser tax how much stress we are putting on a poor people why they are poor they are willingly not poor because of the circumstances and uh, so many reasons are there for the poverty they remain poor and if we say that if we provide negative motivation they may switch over to a uh, middle class then this is also a logic class thinking but Somehow these uh, opinions are given for in for favoring the regressive taxation though these are not valid but we need to accept as a type of taxation and the better thing is that in India there is no regressive taxations are there generally regressive taxation are used for the luxurious uh, sorry the commodity which are harmful to the health of the consumer for those kind of product only regressive taxation are in operation in india we are not having this kind of taxation at all so that is a good thing by this way again regressive taxation is having no advantage and disadvantage this is only a concept only proportional and progressive taxation is having advantage and disadvantage so by this we are completing the types of taxation and from next lecture we will discuss canons of text. Till the time have a good day.